Hello everyone. Welcome. Today we're going to cover VMware 8 Update 3. We've got some pretty big improvements that build upon what we've already done with Express Storage Architecture, which first shipped with vSAN 8. This has been one of the most dramatic improvements in the product since the original launch back in 2014. Now we're going to look into three distinct areas. Uh, we're going to look at some improvements within different flexibility and topologies, data protection, as well as management and operational visibility. Let's dig into this in more detail. So just delivering storage in only one way to consume it, you know, a single cluster or hyperconverged isn't really enough for customers in the use cases. We've extended this out with some things like what we've done with vSAN Max, but we're also improving how this can be consumed with VMware Cloud Foundation. So starting here with VMware Cloud Foundation 5.2, we are now supporting express storage architecture and a stretch cluster topology. And this is really one of the final um, kind of feature completeness in terms of making express storage architecture the default um, assumption going forward in your VMware Cloud Foundation designs. Um, this allows you to survive the loss of an entire site or data center. And this resiliency and customization that can be done is, is pretty incredible. Uh, VMware Cloud Foundation workloads can be stored with much higher levels of resilience, and they can consume a lot less capacity than the, the previous original storage architecture while reducing the data sent across the inner site link. Next up with these improvements with VMware Cloud Foundation, we're also bringing these capabilities we have with vSAN Max, our disaggregated storage platform, and making it supported within VMware Cloud Foundation so that customers can use this for as primary centralized shared storage for all of your workload domains. Um, this is going to offer tremendous flexibility and capability. And for customers who are already looking at VMware Cloud Foundation, they're going to find that the licensing consolidation capabilities of being able to pool a distinct storage cluster um, is really going to help drive down cost of ownership in their environment. Next up in terms of improvements are improvements in scalability. So with vSAN file services, um, we're Previously, we had a limit of 100 shares per cluster. We've driven this up to 250 shares per cluster. This enhancement is specifically targeted at customers using NFS exports uh, for different use cases. A major use case of this are these read-write uh, persistent volumes that are commonly used for Kubernetes and DevOps workflows and things like that. And this will help with scalability quite a bit. Um, this has been out since vSAN 7, um, the file services, and we've got a lot of different use cases ranging from home shares and things like that to Linux clients, but we're looking to improve the scalability and uh, capabilities of this. Next up is data protection. Um, this is something that you know we've been looking at for quite a while, and we needed really to have a good foundation to build upon with this, and one of those foundations that was critical for these new capabilities is the express storage architecture. Um, this improves the performance of snapshots and lets us enhance data mobility in a number of ways. So looking at this, um, we've had these new snapshots that were available if you manually took a snapshot or they were called by a third party product, um, but we're now putting in the UI itself, having this ESA snapshotting engine that's there uh, to help protect data. This allows VMware Cloud Foundation administrators to easily protect and recover VMs against accidents, such as an accidental data deletion, as well as malicious actions, such as ransomware attacks. We offer this capability through effortless configuration of protection groups that can be automated on setup. It allows you to define what VM should be protected, how frequent, and for how long. Snapshots can be made immutable for further protection for unique needs as basic ransomware protection. And this also integrates with our VMware Live Cyber Recovery for more comprehensive cloud-based ransomware detection. This new era of protection and portability of snapshots um, should help usher in new opportunities for improved security and efficiency within your data center itself. Looking through the, the workflows for this, you can drive these capabilities from your existing management plane together. So we're able to create these immutability modes and these protection groups. 
we're able to use these snapshots not only for data protection, but also for link clones and other operations. And from an observability and management basis, we want to make sure that you can easily, at a quick glance, understand what's protected, what its current state is, um, and how much capacity it's using. So looking through this intuitive management, um, we don't want to stop at just simple workflows. So we do want to expose, um, as you can see here, information about the snapshots through the UI. Now this can be exposed at a cluster view, at a virtual machine level, or even a protection group. Information about the snapshots, such as the number of them that are created and the capacity consumed can be presented in an easy to read manner. And the policy-based outcomes have been a big thing with vSAN, starting with our storage-based policy management. Um, we want to have protection groups that also snap these groups together um, and derive common outcomes and common restore points. So maybe you want to snapshot an application group. In this first example here, we have an HR application. We want this um, to take a snapshot once a day or on a weekly basis. And we also want a mutability of these snapshots for compliance reasons. We might also extend another protection group that again, we manually select a group of virtual machines. These are developer workflows. We're gonna snap these every two days for two weeks. And then maybe we decide that we wanna have an automated protection group. So in this case, we've decided to make the membership automatically dynamic. Any virtual machine that has SQL in the name, I'm using a wildcard here, a star, we'll have two schedules actually here. We'll have an initial protection basis where we keep every six hours for three days, and then we'll have a more relaxed schedule that chains off of that every one day for four weeks. A virtual machine can participate in, in, in up to three protection groups, and protection groups can have up to 10 unique schedules. Um, there is a fair amount of scalability into this. Virtual machines can have up to 200 snapshots each. Now, how can this how can vSAN data protection be used? One of the best examples of a comprehensive ransomware protection for this is in conjunction with our VMware Live recovery product, or more specifically, the VMware Live cyber recovery. For environments using VMware Live cyber recovery, its connector will automatically detect when clusters use vSAN data protection. They'll be able to capture point in time snapshots for the purpose of cloud based protection against ransomware. VCLR also provides all the ingredients and tools necessary for not only to not only protect the data on site, but also off site and, the, and bring them up in an isolated recovery environment so that the VMs can be analyzed and sanitized prior to restoring back on premises. Now, vSAN data protection can be used also to augment existing data backup solutions for quick restores of virtual machines. The existing VDP APIs will continue to work in conjunction with this, and one or more VMs can easily be reverted back to a desired point in time using our snapshot management. This can be an ideal solution for an accidental VMware misconfiguration, unsuccessful upgrade, or even just suspected malicious activity restoration. This example, I've got my database virtual machine that I'm restoring back from, an, from a deletion activity. Now looking, you know, also this protection does work even when the VM is no longer available. The catalog is kept independent. So one of the more powerful scenarios of the VSAN data protection provides is the ability to restore virtual machine snapshots, even if the VM was deleted and removed from inventory. This provides a very simple and easy to use um, workflow for administrators to quickly restore the VM on that accidental activity. So in this case, we've fired off our restore and you can see in the UI, we've got this missing from cluster tab and that's where we will find those, those VMs that are no longer in the regular inventory itself. The other thing is you can do more than just safeguard your virtual machines uh, in basic recovery scenarios. So VMware vSAN data protection can also provide the ability to create linked clones using snapshots. Um, this can be ideal for solutions and scenarios where you want to run a subset of VMs for the purposes of development and testing, whether it be it for application development or IT initiatives. 
a key use case on this, especially for providing a lot of value in this copy data workflow might be um, continuous integration, continuous testing workflows, but also more relaxed development environments. Maybe you have a 40 terabyte database that you have developers who want a five fresh copies on a weekly or daily basis in order to work on and making fully hydrated copies of that data might take a rather large amount of time as well as use a lot of space. So having these single instance linked clones that can be rapidly built out can help support those development teams and make workflows that are self-service and driven by them. We also wanna cover some of the differences and protection mechanisms that you will have available today. So how does vSAN data protection compare to vSphere replication? vSAN data protection fits nicely into kind of the suite of outcomes that customers want to provide. Since you can use the high performance snapshot engine for both, along with the new scheduler to easily define and create retention policies. Looking at what we can do here with vSphere replication, this is an ideal solution for extending, not only creating that data protection locally, but copying that data out to help be part of a 3-2-1 data strategy, as well as this replication engine can also copy that data to another cluster. Um, it's great to have local snapshots and clones, but there may be scenarios or failures that to which an entire cluster or an entire site may become compromised and no longer be available. In these situations, being able to use the site replication to drive copies to other places can help beyond basic um, local recovery scenarios. VMware vSphere replication really is best suited for these data protection scenarios beyond that physical boundary of the cluster, such as another cluster, and again, ideally at another site. Let's talk about management last. <clears throat> so performance and resilience and flexibility um, would mean a lot less if the solution is not easy to operate. And vSAN 8 Update 3 offers several new improvements for simplifying day-to-day -day operations for administrators. So one of these is making it easier to understand the hardware health in an environment. And we've introduced new ways of gathering storage device telemetry data from your favorite server vendor. Uh, this new proactive hardware management capability is driven by being able to integrate within to the existing vSphere lifecycle management framework, leveraging the hardware support managers to adapt these systems with this new capability. This is a powerful way to extend the ability of intelligence about the condition of the hardware so that in the event of, say, a failing storage device, vSAN can alert the administrator quickly with recommended actions for remediation without the user or the operator having to go into server management utilities separately. In addition, on the hardware monitoring front, we have an, we've introduced um, a new novel approach for tracking storage device health back with 8U2, being able to expose some of the smart metrics and endurance metrics. Um, now we are extending this within 8U3 with new abilities to customize these alarms. And this really helps benefit environments with a mix of different hardware and environments where drives may have been added at different ages or even from different manufacturers being able to pull this in. For administrators being able to track um, the endurance tracking and bring that um, directly into the UI helps take bring more confidence and assurance that the hardware is ready to go not only today, but into the future. Performance is something that is incredible in terms of the improvements that have been delivered with vSAN 8 and Express Storage Architecture. And a distributed storage system allows you to aggregate a lot of different devices and a lot of different hosts in a performance workflow and manner. Now, part of these capabilities are pretty important is being able to understand where performance bottlenecks do occur. Now, vSAN VM IOTRIP Analyzer, which first shipped with vSAN 7 Update 3, has been a very popular tool. It allows you to interrogate a virtual machine and understand the entire IO path and how latency is being injected or where bottlenecks are coming from. We've improved this capability in vSAN 8 Update 3 with the ability now to run these performance analytics on virtual multiple virtual machines at the same time. This is ideal for applications that are co that comprise multiple virtual machines, such as maybe a SQL Server farm or a multi-tiered app stack. 
users can select up to eight virtual machines at a time and quickly run through the analysis of each VM selected. The capabilities of IOTRIP Analyzer is a direct result performance and efficiency and gives great visibility and intelligence to your workloads. Using RDMA and a distributed storage system like vSAN can provide even better performance for guest virtual machine workflows, as well as reduce the strain on host resources. vSAN Update 3 for 8 improves tracking and monitoring of RDMA networks for optimal performance. Our health findings now do real-time health checks against the hardware compatibility list and make sure you're using certified uh, network interfaces for RDMA, as well as that the NIC driver and firmware is vSAN certified. <clears throat> if anything does not pass, it will not be it will be presented to the vSAN cluster health scoring dashboard, and will give you priority to ensure that this is addressed quickly. This improvement will aid any new and existing vSAN clusters using vSAN over RDMA. We're also enhancing the visibility of vSAN Max clusters through the interface within VMware Cloud Foundation operations. So with VCF 5.2, vSAN Max clusters are now treated as a first-class citizen in VCF operations, where you can easily track resource utilization, health, and health status of these clusters. Much like aggregated vSAN HCI clusters, users will be able to track and forecast storage capacity needs for their environments across powered by vSAN Max. One of the strengths of VCF operations is the holistic view of your entire data center and all of the storage and clusters in the environment. With this latest release, you'll be able to easily see the relationship from the vSAN Max cluster and the vSphere clusters to which it provides storage resources. So with just a few words to sum up the capabilities introduced in vSAN 8 Update 3, through these enhancements with disaggregation, we can separate or disaggregate compute resources in all new ways. Some of the core platform enhancements drive even better performance for workloads on the express storage architecture, and it does so without adding any complexity. And lastly, we've simplified operations in a way that allows environments of all sizes to benefit. This has been a presentation of what's new with vSAN 8 Update 3. Thank you.